Dr. Heidi Bolton is the research director of the South African Qualifications Authority, SACWA. Her responsibilities include SACWA's long-term research partnerships for NQF implementation and further development, assessing the impact of the NQF, oversight of research-related development work, and research capacity development in the system. Heidi was previously senior researcher at Umalusi, I'm sure all of us know uh, Umalusi, and before that, a publisher of further education and training textbooks. She taught school and adult learners for many years. So could you please give a hand of welcome to Dr. Heidi. Thank you and good morning. I'll try and make up for the late entry by sticking to my 15 minutes and unfortunately you can all see exactly how I do. Um, can I stand here? Can you still see? Yes. Or maybe I should sit, I'm not sure. Just, should I sit? What? No, no, just you, all you need to do is just press yeah. it. <coughs> I'm basically going to contextualize this research project in terms of just say something about the institutional location and then also its location in SACWA's research partnership program. And thirdly, just located in the whole NQF development context. So when SACWA chooses to have a research partnership with institutions, which institutions do we choose? Now basically, we, we like to work with public higher education institutions, and they are often offices or units or chairs within the institutions. We also work with other research organizations, but obviously all the public institutions are aligned with the constitution, but some are more proactive in their alignment with the values of the constitution. And so we look for that. And we also look for a deep systematic, systemic understanding of, of the NQF objectives, access, um, redress, transparency, progression, and so on. And also the support that, that organizations are giving to, the, to developing these objectives in, in society, and the extent to which the organizations have networks. So they need to really be working in the spirit of the Constitution, and UWC was a very clear choice for this project. Apart from the research topic, um, the unit, the DLL, is very much in line with where the country's trying to go. Um, these are just some of the research, in fact, these are all the research partnerships we've had up to now. We've had six, and um, I won't go through them. They tend to last three to five years, and the last three um, have been very recent in the last three, four, five years, and they've been very, very important for the current focus in the country. If you look back about five years, there was a huge emphasis on access. How can one improve access and RPL, and that was also a project with, with UWC. Um, Alan Ralphs was the project leader for that one. Then the roads one, um, the second roads one into learning pathways, the shift, in, it's a, been a subtle shift because obviously access is still a huge issue. But we've shifted very much to articulation. How do people progress once they are in the system? Do they fall out? Are they able to move in and out of the system for education, training, development and work? And the roads partnership looked at learning pathways. What are they? And so we've moved from an idea in the last three years of integration and articulation as being quite a simple thing to seeing it in a number of different ways. In one sense, a learning pathway can be something official, like one goes from an NSC um, a matric certificate to university or university to the workplace. There's an official linked up path there, a highway if you like. But then there's another type of linking that happens that makes learning <coughs> pathways possible. And that is um, institutions that create the pathways through arrangements, so a college to a university, or a university workplace link, or other kinds of links, and with credit accumulation and transfer and so on. Um, and those need to be supported. And then the third type of pathway is the pathways that individuals make themselves. And they study, they work, they get funding when they can, and they progress and so on. And this is this is the kind of pathway that the flexible provision will really support. And it's really, really important because a lot of people are doing it. So this is where this particular project fits into SACWA's um, research partnership projects. And then just to say that essentially what the partnerships are focusing on is these things at a deep level. It's articulation, integration of the system. 
And that's where this project, the UWC Flexible Provision Project fits, is at the top one. They're also focusing on transparency, quality, redress, and access, and learner movement, but ultimately learner gain. So if you analyze deeply, you'll get down to these things, which are the objectives of the National Qualifications Framework. Then two very brief slides. I do not want you to read this. I just want you to look at the form. The NQF, so this project is related in the National Qualifications Framework. And what is it? Many people understand it as a grid of qualifications. Yeah, I think I might be blocking the view. And there are three sub-frameworks, as you know. There's Omalusi and the General Further Education. Then there's Higher Education and the Trades and Occupational Sector. So one can see the NQF as a grid of qualifications and something outside one's work. But that's a very impoverished understanding of it. How we talk about it at SACWA is as an activity system. So there are many, and as interacting, a set of interacting systems. Again, I don't want you to read the words here. Just look at the picture. So each triangle could represent an organization. And this is Engelstrom's cultural historical activity theory. So it encourages one to look at things like, you know, the entity trying to achieve something and the objectives and then the things that intervene, the tools that intervene, and the communities of practice, and the rules, and the roles, and so on. So if one triangle is SACWA, then the three little triangles could be quality councils. If, one, if a big little triangle is UWC, the little triangles could be the departments, and the different pilot sites in the study. So one can look at tools across these different entities. Are they aligned? Are they working together? Are they in dialogue? One can look at the communities of practice as well. And this is a richer way of understanding the NQF. It's about the parts of the system interacting with each other, and it includes all the parts, even preschool, adult education, mainstream education and training, and so on. Okay, so how we see the NQF is as a relational device. It's a means to relate the parts of the system. That's very important. Um, the NQF also is a, it's a comprehensive thing in this country. It includes more aspects than NQFs in other countries. And I've just lifted, listed some of them in the black uh, bullets there. Um, the level descriptors form a part of what the NQF is, and it enables people to, it's one tool that enables people to talk to each other. Registering qualifications is part of it, so everyone knows and can check on the website what is registered, what is accredited, the public can know that, it's transparent. The same with professional bodies and professional designations, they are registered, they can be, and, and the ones that are registered on the NQF are basically in line with the South African <coughs> Constitution, that's the point of it. The National Learners Records Database has all the data on learner achievements, but also providers, professional bodies, and so on. And then the verification services, also for, it, it helps transparency, and there's advocacy, and uh, redress, and access initiatives, and then articulation. So these are the things that make up the NQF in our country. And what have we seen over the last 20 years in all these aspects? Remember, we're trying for the access, redress, transparency, quality, and so on. We've seen a shift in all the tools that we use, and we've seen a shift in the rules, and we've seen shifts in the communities of practice, but we have not seen shifts in the basic objectives because they remain. And I think I've mentioned just now, because of the research partnerships, we've experienced deep shifts in understanding and what access is and what articulation, what learner movement possibilities there are. A very deepened understanding. And it's thanks to these research partnerships. And secondly, um, the idea of relational agency that Shirley mentioned is, has emerged as being a very, very important thing because we're trying to relate all the parts of the system in the country and make it possible and user-friendly for users to move around in the system. And to do that, we need relational agency. We need to be able to, to work together in relationship. Um, I've mentioned these three different types of articulation. I won't mention them again. This is the third last, sorry, second last slide. The last one is about relational agency. Um, so as I said, there's the three different types of articulation. And the UWC partnership on into flexible provision is really, really important 
for supporting individuals, but also institutional arrangements for supporting articulation in the system. We know about the joined up qualifications and we're trying to make new joinings. And then the last slide is basically just this thing that Shirley mentioned. This relational expertise, which is something that we all need. And as Shirley said, it's the additional knowledge and skill over and above specialized knowledge that people have. It, engage, it involves engaging with the motives of others. So if one's in a room where they're conflicting um, ideas and approaches, it's about engaging with them, understanding what the others are saying and what, where they desire to go, and also the traditions from which these um, motives come. It's useful vertically um, in authority hierarchies, but also horizontally. And lastly, it respects history, tradition, and most importantly, it focuses on common understanding, which is actually that understanding of each other's motives. That's the common understanding that's been spoken about. And this idea has been introduced to SACWA and SACWA stakeholders by the UWC. So we're very grateful. It comes from Anne Edwards and Shirley Walters got Anne Edwards to come and you know, present to all of us. And it's been a very important con concept. It's already been spread across more than 10 different government departments and so on. And we're working on it. So just to say thank you, um, UWC, the research that's been done through UWC is really, really important for the development of the education and training system in the country. Thank you.